Although we've covered a few basic functional connectivity analyses, such as resting state functional connectivity and regional homogeneity analyses, those are mainly restricted for use with resting state data sets. Now, we can take the same concept, trying to find out which voxels have some sort of functional correlation or interaction with each other, by using it with an actual data set where people are making responses and actually doing things. This is called a beta series correlation. And the idea behind it is we have a beta that's being estimated for each trial. And in a typical analysis, all these betas tend to get averaged together across all the trials. In effect, you get rid of any sort of information about the variance that went into calculating that average. However, beta series is interested in the variance between each of those trials. So for example, you might have a beta of 1 in the first trial, and a beta of 0.5 in the second trial, a beta of 3 in the third trial, and so on. And from that, you can take voxels which show that same estimation pattern for each trial and correlate it with every other voxel in the brain. Uh, this was first done in a paper by Rissman, Gazelli, and Desposito back in 2004, and it's a pretty neat analysis that you can do with uh, your own data. So uh, let's get into it first. Um, so the first thing that you need to do is recall that with 3D deconvolve, typically we're entering in timing files, which say this regressor happened at these specific time points. And usually they'll just go into 3D Convolve and you'll estimate a, an average beta weight for each of those conditions. But if you look at this procedure file, and I'll, I'll put this up online, both this data set from one of the studies I published a few years ago and all this uh, analysis stuff. But notice that the things we've changed right here, uh, let's say I'm interested in doing a beta series for uh, left and right button presses. Okay, and this tutorial will focus mainly on left button presses. So instead of just uh, stim times, you add this stim times underscore im, which stands for, I think, individual modulation. So it's an individual estimate, an individual beta weight for each trial in that regressor. So if you had 20 instances of somebody pressing the left button, then we're going to get 20 beta weights. And those are going to be used in our analysis. So that's conceptually what's going on here with the beta series analysis, and that's how you set it up in AFNI. If you're using another package like FSL, SPM, I'm sure I'll get to this in the future at some point. I say that about everything, but just know that you need the, the same concept. You want to enter each trial as its own regressor so it gets its own beta estimate, because you need that to do the resulting beta series analysis. And we'll cover how to extract that stuff and then do some of the initial stages in the next tutorial.